At this point, I would like you to try numbers one, four, and six on your own. So pause the video, try these three problems, and press play when you have finished. Okay, at this point, I hope that you have tried problems one, four, and six. We're going to go over problems one, four, and six right now. And for homework, you're going to complete problems two, three, and five. First, let's look at problem number one. The element copper has naturally occurring isotopes with mass numbers of 63 and 65. The relative abundance for each of the masses is so now they give you the specific mass here, 62.93 AMU, and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.692. And for the second example, for the second isotope, we have a mass of 64.93 AMU. And this one has a percent of 30.8. Remember, we're dividing both of these percents by 100. So we get 0 0.308 for that one. Now let's calculate our two numbers here, 62.93 times 0.692, turns out to be 43.5. And for our second example, 64.93 times 0.308, turns out to be 19.998, but when we round it and account for significant figures, this is gonna end up being 20.0 AMU. When we add these together, we will get an answer of 63.5 AMU. If you check your periodic table for the average atomic mass of copper, you'll find that it's 63.55 AMU. So we got extremely close to the answer. The nice part about these problems is that for some of them, you can look, you can verify whether or not your work is correct by looking at a periodic table. Okay, let's move on to example problem four. Okay. In example problem four, we're looking at a slightly more challenging problem. This would be expected of an honors level or an accelerated honors level student. Let's read the question. If naturally occurring boron is 80.20% with this atomic mass, 11.009 AMU, I'm gonna change our percent to a decimal, and 19.80% of some other form. So they don't tell you what this other number is here, but they do tell you the percent, 19.80. So we'll divide that by 100. Finally, what must be the atomic mass of the second isotope? So this is our unknown. We can put an X here in order to account for the fact that this piece, the total, the average atomic mass is 10.811 AMU. In order to solve this, what we're gonna need to do is first figure out what we do know. That's this piece right here. Then we can subtract those two to figure out the missing piece that goes here and then solve this equation for X. So let's go across the top here first. We have 11.009 times 0 0.8020. That turns out to be 8.829, 8.829 AMU. If we had both, they would add up to be 10.811. So in order to figure out this piece, the piece that's missing here, we can take the 10.811 and we can subtract out the part that we know, 8.829.
When we do that subtraction, we get an answer of 1.982 AMU. So that goes here, 1.982 AMU. Now the problem is fairly simple. X times this number turns out to be 1.982. So I'm gonna set up that problem. So 0.1980 X equals 1.982 AMU. Divide both sides by 0 0.1980. X turns out to be 10.01 AMU. This time we do keep the unit of AMU because we weren't solving for a percentage, we were solving for one of our masses. So mass has to have units of AMU. That completes problem number four. The last problem, problem number six, is intended as practice for our accelerated honors students. So let's take a look at problem number six. It says lithium has two naturally occurring isotopes, one with a mass of 6.015 AMU and a second with a mass of 7.016 AMU. We are also told the average atomic mass for lithium is 6.941 AMU. This is very similar to the last example problem we did with the two isotopes of chlorine. So in that one, we set one of our percentages as X and the other percentage was 1.00 minus X. So similar to what we did last time, we're going to write an equation that adds together these two pieces. So for the first part, we're gonna get 6.015x. And again, I'm gonna drop AMU because it appears on both sides of our equation. The second piece is we're gonna add 7.016, that's when I multiply it by one, and we're gonna subtract 7.016x. That's when I take this and multiply it through times negative x. That is gonna equal 6.941. The next piece is to combine like terms. So I'm going to subtract my 7.016 from both sides of the equation. So 6.941 minus 7.016 turns out to be negative 0 0.075. And I'm going to combine my two X terms. So 6.015 minus 7.016 turns out to be negative 1.001. .001. Now I can divide by negative 1.001, .001, divide by negative 1.001, .001, and I get my final answer equal to 0 0.2 significant figures, 0 0.75, that turns out to be 7.5%. So my value for this one is 7.5%. The part that's missing to get to 100 is this one, 
Okay, that finishes up our last practice problem. What I would like you to do is for homework, please finish the remaining problems. So those are problems two, three, and five. Only accelerated honors and honors level students have to complete problem number five. If you have any questions, please stop by the office hours being offered this week. Check Schoology for details. And lastly, if you are missing any assignments, we are approaching the end of the marking period. Please make sure to get those assignments in as soon as possible. I can't do them for you. I can only help you do them. If you're having difficulty, please reach out. I will meet with you uh, at any point. We'll figure something out, but you need to get in that missing work. Thanks very much. Please let me know if you have any questions and have a great week.